Hi Stampers! Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool Scrabble tile pendant necklace using designer series paper, a Scrabble tile, and some hard resin to finish off the surface. So first, what you'll need is a Scrabble tile, and you can either buy these in bulk off the internet or you could certainly just buy a Scrabble game. I think it comes with a hundred pieces. And you'll need to pick whatever designer series paper you'd like. I'm going to use Floral District, and for this I'm going to use our one inch punch, and I'm going to just punch out one little square, and you want to look to see whatever designer series paper you use, what pattern you want on your necklace, that's where you want to see through the view of the punch here. So I'm just going to pop out a square, and then you want to adhere this to your Scrabble tile pendant. And what I like to use for this is trusty old Mod Podge. Um, it can be used as a glue and a sealer. So I'm just going to use a little paintbrush. And what you want to do is apply the Mod Podge to the paper, not the Scrabble tile pendant, because that wood will absorb the Mod Podge quickly and dry faster than you'd like it to. So just apply um, liberally to the back side of your designer series paper. And then you want to adhere the blank side of your Scrabble tile to the paper. And I just kind of center that on the back and press down. And it'll adhere pretty quickly to that designer series paper. So you want to set that aside to dry. I typically flip it upside down uh, just so the paper gets some air. And you let that dry. You could probably let it dry for about 30 minutes to an hour. When it's dry, it'll look like this. And you want to take an X-Acto knife or craft knife and cut around the Scrabble tile to cut off all that extra paper. I'm going to do that real quickly. Sometimes with that Mod Podge you have to go through it twice um, to get the paper to cut for you. Okay, now the next step you're going to have sort of some sharp edges here. So take one of our sanding blocks and I just picked the roughest edge that's on there and you just want to gently sand off those edges. What's really cool with this designer series paper is you'll start to see a little bit of the white core showing through. I just think that looks really nice on these pendants. So you want to do that to all four sides. You can sand it as much as you want to. I just kind of feel with my thumb to make sure that it's where I want it to be. Now once that's done, there's a couple options you can choose to do here. One is you could actually apply a layer of crystal effects to finish off the pendant. And that's just as simple as applying the crystal effects pretty liberally to the top of this. You just kind of move it around with the applicator tip, but you just want to push it right up to the edge. This will give it a cool finish as well. Kind of use the surface tension to push that crystal effects off to the edges. And then you can set that aside to dry and you'll be finished. But what I actually like to use is resin. Let me push this off to the side here. Resin is a much harder surface, it's more permanent, and so in order to use resin you actually need to seal your designer series paper because otherwise once the resin hardens it discolors the paper and makes it much darker. So to do that you're actually going to apply two to three layers of Mod Podge in stages. You wait till each layer dries. So I'll apply the first layer and show you. And you want to make sure you get all the way to the edges so that resin doesn't get up underneath the designer series paper. So I would set that aside to dry. That you can wait another just another 20 to 30 minutes. And then when you apply the next coat, use your brush stroke in an opposite direction. That'll just smooth out the texture on it. Once the resin's applied, you won't even notice it. Okay, so now that you've applied your two to three coats of Mod Podge, the next step is to apply your resin. 
Now, I'm not going to show you all the details of how to mix the resin. I use something called Envirotex Light. It is a two-part hardener and resin, and there's very specific instructions on how to set it up. You need to, it's, it's equal parts of each. You need to stir them vigorously for about two minutes. There's a couple of videos you can find on the internet showing you how to mix it. Once you've mixed those two, and I've already mixed a batch beforehand, a small batch of it, but you want to add just a few drops to this pendant. It's going to take a little bit of practice to get used to resin, um, so what I would suggest is working on a surface with wax paper. I'm not doing that for this tutorial, but if you use the wax paper in case you make any mistakes, that resin will come right off the wax paper. So you just want to drop a few drops onto your Scrabble tile pendant. I'm going to get just a couple more drops. Less is more. You can always add an additional drop if you need to. And then ultimately what I'll start to do is move this resin around very slowly to the edges of the tile. I'm going to wipe off some excess here. And I'm going to use this popsicle stick to move the resin just to the very edge of my Scrabble tile. Again, like with the crystal effects, we're working with the surface tension here. If you break that surface tension, the resin will go up and over the sides and become a mess. So just work with a steady hand and slowly and gently move that resin around. If possible, I would work in a well-ventilated area but free of dust and particles. It's quite impossible in my house because I've got two cats and a dog, but I try to keep them out of my craft room. But of course they love it in here. Now the resin is actually going to take 72 hours to cure. So what I kind of set up is a little tent with some wax paper and something to suspend the wax paper over the top to prevent the dust from settling. Now there's going to be a couple of bubbles that are going to appear on this after you've poured the resin. And there's two ways to get rid of those bubbles. The first is to use a straw and just blow through the straw to pop the bubbles. The second is actually to use a blowtorch and that's my preferred method because it works instantly. Don't be afraid, they actually sell these little mini blowtorches at the home improvement store. Really easy to use. You just light it with a match, or sorry, with a lighter. And then really quickly you just run it over the edge of, or the top of your pendant. And those bubbles will disappear instantly. Now they're going to appear uh, a few times over the next 10 to 15 minutes, so you'll want to run your blowtorch over it three or four times until you don't see any more bubbles appearing. And then you'll want that to cure for 72 hours. It's a long time to wait, but the, the end result is worth the wait. Again, I would suspend wax paper over the top of it to prevent the dust from settling on the resin as it's curing. And then the last step to finish off your pendant, once the resin has hardened, here's one that's finished, is you want to glue a bale to the back of it so that you can attach it to a necklace. And they sell these online, jewelry suppliers, and I like to use E6000 glue it's industrial strength using a toothpick. You want to just apply the light, slightest little bit. And I just pick it up with the end of my toothpick. And then I apply that to the rough side of the bale. That's the side that you'll be gluing to the back of your Scrabble tile. Make sure you're applying it on the right side of your Scrabble tile. Making sure the letter's going the right way move that into its position and what's nice with these bales is that they will sit flush against the edge of the Scrabble tile. Once you have it where you want it just apply some pressure for about 10 seconds or so and then I would let that sit overnight to finish gluing into place. Then you can just attach your necklace to the bale and you have a finished Scrabble tile pendant.